Okay, next in our evidence for the resurrection of Christ and being able to refute uh, all the things that, uh, the stories that people make up that say, no, he didn't really die and rise from the dead. There was a conspiracy. He passed out in the tomb. The next one we're going to talk about is the apostles were deceivers. That's the conspiracy theory. Now, we all know the kind of conspiracy theories that we hear nowadays in the news. This one has been kicking around again for nearly 2,000 years, and we can pretty much uh, shut this one down quite easily as well. So, why couldn't the apostles have made the whole thing up? Well, there's seven good arguments against that. Now, way back in the day, uh, there was a mathematician called Blaise Pascal, uh, a programming language was actually named after him, and he gave the simplest psychologically sound argument against the conspiracy theory. Number one, Jesus was able to sustain the disciples while he was alive. You know, we see that uh, the disciples were uh, a little bit bumbling and a little bit stupid sometimes. Uh, they didn't have it all together, but Jesus kept them together, kept teaching them. Once he died, who kept them cohesive enough to do something as elaborate as come up with this conspiracy and then actually execute the plan? Uh, the answer is no one. We see what happens after uh, Jesus was arrested. They all abandoned him. And then a couple of them hung around during his trial. And then finally we see John and Jesus' mother at the foot of the cross. After he died, the disciples are nowhere to be found. They are uh, too scared, too afraid of what's going to happen. They, they did come up with this theory. Okay, The human heart is way too fickle, uh, way too susceptible to bribery, bribery, and way too susceptible to self-preservation. What did the disciples do when the chips were down? They ran away and made sure they weren't the next ones up on the cross. So all of them working together and all of them keeping their story straight is beyond improbable. And they would have had to take on the entire establishment, both the Jewish authorities and the Roman government. And it would only have taken one of them to make the whole house of cards fall down under the threat of imprisonment, the threat of torture, or the threat of death. And the fact is, none of those things happened. So that is why Blaise Pascal says this whole conspiracy argument is nonsense. Now, it's a historical fact that no one, weak or strong, saint or sinner, Christian or heretic, ever confessed to fabricating the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not of their own free will, not under the threat of torture, under the threat of death, or under the promise of a bribe. Even when men broke under torture, even when they denied Christ as their Lord and worshipped Caesar, not a single one ever admitted to partaking in any kind of conspiracy. No one let the cat out of the bag because the cat was never in the bag in the first place. Now, if the resurrection was a made-up story, that would make this simple group of Middle Eastern Jewish peasants the most clever, the most intelligent, and not to mention the most best-selling authors of fiction of all time. And then finally, while a man may die for something that he believes is true, he will not willingly die for something that he knows is a lie. Eleven of the twelve apostles were martyred for their faith, and for their faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Read your Gospels. Look at the behavior of the apostles. They were afraid. They were despairing. They were frequently Stupid. There's no other word for it. And they were often cowardly. Now suddenly, they were transformed by some event which gave them confidence, steadfastness, and boldness in the face of hostility and persecution. And it gave them certainty. Now this proves not only their sincerity, but it testifies to a powerful cause of this transformation. Now that is the power of faith in Christ crucified and raised for their salvation. In a hostile environment in that Roman Empire, and 
in the hostile environment of the Jewish religion, people flocked to become members of this Christian faith, which blossomed in an atmosphere of persecution. The first churches were literally underground where they had to leave little coded signs for each other to recognize whether someone else was a Christian because you couldn't speak it out loud. And they met in one another's homes under cover of darkness. And yet, this fledgling religion blossomed. Why? Because this mighty event that gave them this, this faith and this uh, certainty was indeed the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Now, there can be no conspiracy unless you have a motive. The apostles had no motive. You can watch all kinds of true crime shows on television or even the fictitious ones. What's the first thing that the police look for when they're trying to find a suspect? Who has a motive? Okay, there was no advantage and nothing to be gained by them spinning a lie about a resurrected Christ. What did they gain for their trouble? Okay, they were hated. They were scorned, they were persecuted, they were excommunicated, they were imprisoned, they were tortured, they were exiled, some of them were crucified, some were boiled alive, some were roasted alive, some were beheaded, some were skinned, some were disemboweled, some were fed to wild animals. That is not a very good motivation to spread a conspiracy theory or a conspiracy and try to tell people that it's the truth. Now, if the resurrection was a lie, the Jews would have produced the body of Jesus and ended all the arguments. Rome was on the side of the Jews, not the side of the Christians. And if the Jews couldn't retrieve the body because the disciples stole it, well, then you have to go back to our arguments about the swoon theory. Now, the disciples could not have gotten away with such a conspiracy especially in Jerusalem at the time and location of the crucifixion, in an area full of eyewitnesses. They were able to proclaim the resurrection in Jerusalem in the faces of their enemies only weeks after Good Friday. This demonstrates that what they claimed was the truth. Now keep in mind, Jesus was crucified at the Passover. You have tons and tons of visitors in Jerusalem for the Passover. And in just a few weeks, you have tons and tons of visitors in Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost. So this demonstrates that what they claimed was the truth because they could have never preached this kind of stuff and been believed under these kinds of circumstances were it not actually true. And if there had been a conspiracy, the disciples' enemies would have uncovered it. They had the interest, they had the motivation, and they had the power, both the religious power and the political power, to get it done. Again, the Jews could have produced Jesus' body and shut down the entire thing. History shows us again and again and again that all such conspiracies are eventually exposed. Going on 2,000 years, this conspiracy has never been exposed. Now we'll go ahead and talk about the next theory, which is that the apostles themselves were deceived, the hallucination theory. Again, there were far too many witnesses, okay? Hallucinations are something that happens to you privately. Okay? The witnesses were alive for a long time, and they could be interviewed, as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 3-8. Then modern science and psychology denies that mass hallucinations can occur and should not be confused with something called mass hysteria. Uh, that is when something strange is afoot and people start uh, letting rumors get out and everybody panics and they spread that rumor. That's not the same as a hallucination. That is not the same as seeing something that is not there. And again, you would think, oh, modern science probably says that that's a real thing, hallucinate, mass hallucinations. It isn't. They even themselves say, yeah, that's not a thing. That doesn't happen. Okay, now the witnesses were qualified to be witnesses. These were simple people. They were honest. They were moral people. And they had firsthand evidence. 
There were 500 that saw Jesus together at the same time and location. It wasn't 500 little separate delusional experiences of seeing Jesus as uh, some kind of apparition or hallucinated uh, encounter with uh, something spiritual. Okay, They all saw him at the same time. Okay. Hallucinations last for a few seconds or even a few minutes. Very rarely they can last for hours. Now if we look at Acts chapter 1 verse 3, this hallucination stayed around for 40 days. Now hallucinations usually only occur once, except in those who are mentally ill. This supposed hallucination repeatedly appeared to ordinary people. You can look in John chapter 20, verse 19 to 21, 14, and again in Acts chapter 1, verse 3. And hallucinations come from inside our minds, built on what is already in our brain. Now this one said and did surprising things that were unexpected, which are not like a dream. Look at Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 9. And not only was Jesus' appearance unexpected, they didn't even believe it at first. They thought he was a ghost. Jesus had to eat some food in front of them to prove that he wasn't. And one of the things you'll notice in common with most of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus is he is always eating. Take a look at Luke 24, verses 36 to 43. And again, hallucinations don't eat. Jesus did this at least twice after Easter. Look at Luke 24, 42 and 43, and John chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Secondly, you can't touch a hallucination. The disciples touched Jesus. Look at Matthew 28, 9, Luke 24, 39, and John 20, 27. Also, hallucinations don't talk. They spoke with Jesus, and he spoke back. Hallucinations don't hold deep conversations for extended periods, let alone to at least 11 people at once over a period of 40 days. Also, the apostles could not have believed in the hallucination if Jesus' body was actually still in the tomb. And if the apostles had hallucinated and had spread their story, the Jews again would have put a stop to it by producing Jesus' body, unless the disciples stole the body, which takes us right back to the conspiracy theory. And a hallucination would only explain the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. It would not explain the empty tomb. It would not explain the rolled away stone. Or it will not explain the inability to produce the body. Now, on the next section, we'll talk about the last uh, argument and how to refute it, which is the apostles made the whole thing up, and it all just became a myth. We'll talk about that in the next section.